I don't really care whether you guys recognize me as a boy or a girl. And That's when more important. Someone uses they and them as my pronouns. I feel like that person is listening to me. That person Protesters are getting clubbed like baby seals and overpaid government workers are threatening to be responsible citizens. Never a dull moment in this bizarro clown world we call reality, and we'll be covering all that in a moment. But first thing on the agenda, pronouns. A person is compelled under Canadian law to use the pronoun of another individual's choice by on pain of law. And I thought, well, no, that's not acceptable. It's one thing to put limits on what a person can't say, like say with hate speech laws, which I also don't agree with, by the way, but that's a different argument. I, th I think it's a narrower argument. But to compel me to use a certain content when I'm formulating my thoughts or my actions under threat of legislative action, I thought, no, what's happened there is the government has introduced compelled speech legislation into the private sphere. It's never happened in the history of English common law. So it's also really important to recognize that pronouns change sometimes. Many of us uh, will not always have the same pronouns uh, because our gender is changing or our gender realization has changed. I think that's really, really important for us to say that the flexibility of your personality should be something that we can respect and the flexibility of your gender identity is something that we can respect. Reddit is a cesspool of wokeness and leftist dictums. It, it's so bad, I even started making a longer form video about that subject, which will be coming in about a couple of weeks from now. And yet, Reddit is like the bag of ultra sugared cookies your uncle left at your home after he dropped by. You know you should just throw that bag of cookies away, but you can't help but reach into it instead and just keep stuffing your mouth with empty calories. One of my guilty pleasures on Reddit is the LinkedIn Lunatics subreddit. LinkedIn is quite possibly a bigger cesspool than Reddit and deserves the scorn it receives. But once in a while, you'll encounter posts that don't deserve to be scorned. In fact, they should be praised. Take this one, for example. This is for my younger friends who are just starting out or about to begin their careers. Don't at all worry about working for peanuts as long as you're gaining valuable lessons in a great place. Remember, as long as you stay hungry, even the peanuts with a bit of salt taste amazing. Embrace and enjoy the journey. This message went completely over their heads and the attacks were predictably vicious. These are the exact same people who long to become members of a union. And the big irony here, if you've never been in a union, here's how it works. You start paying into the union right from day one on the job. The kicker is, however, you are not unionized until you've put in the full three months on that job. So you're essentially paying for zero union benefits or protection for three entire months. Once you do get into the union, they gleefully immediately charge you an initiation fee. Now, for some reason, that makes sense to them, but paying your dues in a specific field or discipline and accepting crappier conditions as you work your way up is completely unreasonable. Leftist logic for you. And then, while still in LinkedIn lunatics, I came across this submission. So if I was like hiring and I saw pronouns, here's what I'm gonna assume. I'm gonna assume you're obviously very liberal. So I'm going to assume you're one of those people that um, is super far left. Um, hey, I'm going to assume you're not a very hard worker. Um, you are either a female or you're a probably not straight guy. So everything in the office is going to have to cater to you, your feelings, your needs, and your emotions. So everyone around you is not going to be able to be themselves and walk on eggshells. Why would anyone want someone like you unless everyone's like you in a work environment? You're going to be the laziest person. You're going to be the most entitled, complain the most, and I think you're going to be the first to sue. So shocker that pronouns weren't helping you guys. Sorry, did I, is there anything I missed there? Is there anything I missed? Now, if you thought the pay your dues post brought on the venom, you haven't seen anything yet. For some reason, that post got almost a thousand comments, and I'm not going to waste time filtering through all that hot dog water, but essentially the complaints boil down to this. Number one, she's crying. I for one don't understand what this is about, but they're very fixated on saying she's crying. If you could explain this to me or the audience, please do so in the comments. I'm all ears. Two, it's all right wing mega trash. It really didn't take long to go there, but if you look at the comments, 
a huge amount of them basically boiled down to just that. And number three, they're all defending themselves. I've always loved the saying, when you explain yourself, you're issuing an apology. The majority of the people in the comments were riled up because they felt personally attacked. The pronoun trend is exactly just that. It's a trend. This is something that will come to an end. We just have to be patient. Political correctness, which is the prequel to the woke movement, didn't even last a full 10 years. So far, the woke movement is closing in on nine years. And one final note, while most of the commenters had negative things to say about the video, it still got an overall score of 65% across two separate threads. That's a decisive majority. 65% of viewers agree with her. They're just not bothering to waste their time posting comments they know will get downvoted and buried by the rainbow mob. So while we're talking about trends that are now on the fade, let's talk about police tolerance for simps. Ever since Hamas attacked Israel in October, the West has been inundated with welfare recipients and professional Cheetos eaters hitting the streets to endorse acts of terror. It's beginning to look, however, like a whole new set of marching orders have been issued in Toronto as the cops there have suddenly gone from bystanders to becoming the merchants of FAFO. Personally, I think the sudden change in policy might have come from this. <laughs> So I guess it's one thing to block off ramps in the US Canada border, but woe be upon the soul who dares interrupt the screening of a movie at the TIFF festival. Once again, just watch it and listen to those boos rain down. <laughs> That right there, that's the sound of the silent majority suddenly becoming very vocal. Finally, this brings us to the one topic that appears to be taboo in Canada, even among the right, and that would be unions. Canada's government workers celebrating at a Labor Day barbecue. In a week, they'll be eating lunch downtown more often. Ottawa has ordered them to return to the office three days a week, up from two. As a taxpayer, it's a waste of my tax dollars. I want to be productive. The largest union for federal government workers has taken its fight to court. It argues Ottawa should have to prove why forcing employees back into the office is better. If you work in the private sector, I already know what you're thinking. But that's what makes the public sector union workers so special. They live in their own little world. You're not allowed to live within that special little world of theirs, but you sure as hell are expected to help protect it whenever it's under threat, be it perceived or real. In the latest development in this whole drama, the union representing the government workers is encouraging them to protest a return to the office office with a stunt so bizarre you'll struggle to believe it. They want their workers to bring their own lunches to work to deprive local businesses close by to their offices of income as a means of protest. You heard that correctly. I won't even go into why they're putting the crosshairs on the wrong target. Anyone who isn't part of this union can clearly understand that. What I don't get is this. If the workers are already working from home now, what difference will their protests make to those surrounding businesses? I digress. All the same, 
Thank you for watching and please consider subscribing.